Good evening. Let's start with prayer. Lord God in heaven, you are God of heaven and earth. You are in all things and about all things and with all things, but most of all, you're within us. You're with us, and you're constantly trying to connect with us. So Lord, help us to connect with you and be open to it, not just think about it or try and perform for you, but actually just open up our hearts, our eyes, our ears, every one of our senses, and connect. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. The gospel for this Sunday is Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It reads like this. In the 15th year, the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iternia and Trachatosius, and Licentius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Here we are, it's Advent, it's not far from Christmas. I mean, you only have so many Christmas shopping days left. And uh, actually, where I am right now is in Sky Valley, Georgia. You can see it's a little bit different background than usually what I get, but it's interesting. Sally and I were given this as a wedding gift 30 years ago by some real dear friends. And we used to come up here all the time, especially when Ian was young. You know, it's very clear to me, and Sally and I just went on a hike a little while ago. Some of the things that went on, you know, in that first year especially. Ian was 10 years old. It was great age. And, and here I was, a young dad. I mean, I had never had a son before, and it was great to be with him. When we decided on maybe the first or second day of being here that we wanted to go to the base of a hill down this road that, that was sort of paved partially and then gravel and then dirt. We got to the base and it was a beautiful waterfall. I mean, it's still there. We were down there just a little while ago. I'll never forget, Sally didn't go with us right away. She said, I'll meet you down by the waterfall. And Ian and I took off and went down early. When we got down there, we both looked at it and it was beautiful, but it was also a challenge thrown at us. We decided that what we'd do is we'd scale the wall of the waterfall, which was filled with ice and moss and everything slippery. I'd only been married at this point nine months. And Ian and I climbed up there he kept on looking at me, he said, mom's gonna kill us. We aren't supposed to be doing this. When Sally came down, she looked at me and she looked at Ian up on the side of the waterfall, trying to scale this thing with all this ice around us. She literally cried and ran back up the mountain. Today, when we went by it, 30 years later, I looked at her and I said, hey, the shortcut's up that waterfall. And she looked at me and she said, 30 years ago, I told you not to do it, and you started to do it anyway. I said, well, maybe this time I shouldn't just hear you say that. Maybe I ought to listen to you. You know, there's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is a sense. Listening is a skill. And the gospel that we have today, we're given the historical background, the setting, you know, in the year or so, fifth year of the emperor Tiberius, etc., and so on. And then it says that John, son of Zechariah, who's John the Baptist, is in the wilderness, and the word of the Lord comes upon him. And he quotes the prophet Isaiah. 
that he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the paths of the Lord. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. I love the way that sounds, the roll of it on your tongue almost. But the part that really gets me is the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Have you ever been out in the wilderness? I mean, you can cry out. Who hears you? Well, maybe nature hears you, but it doesn't really respond. Maybe the animals hear you. But unless somebody's really close, they don't hear you. And if they don't hear you, do they listen to you? They can't if you don't hear. Hearing is a sense. Listening is a skill. Every Advent, I'm always sure of one thing, and that is that God is constantly trying to talk to us. In fact, at Christmas, it's the incarnation. It's where God becomes like us so we can become like him. The great German theologian, Emil Brunner, once said, he said, when God became like Jesus, it was as though the Father got his hands and knees to play with his children. And I've always loved that. And I'm reminded of that during Advent and going into Christmas because it's where God really tries to connect with us, communicate to us. But he communicates so that we can hear him, so we can learn how to listen. How do you learn to listen to God? Most of us don't even bother to take the time to hear him, let alone listen. But how do you listen? You know, after trying to grow in my spiritual life, grow in my faith, for now, really close to 50 years. The way I believe I learn how to listen to God is to learn how to listen to other people. I think God speaks to each and every one of us through every event in our life, through every person that crosses our path, if we have the ability to listen. And the people that sometimes are talking to us, we don't even know that God is speaking through them, but it's by the interaction of us trying to be present for them and actually attuning ourselves to listening to them that we actually learn how to listen to God. For me, I probably haven't been the greatest listener in my life. But there's two individuals in my life that I really learned how to listen from, and it was primarily because they listened to me in some of the deepest, darkest times of my life. They were both therapists. They were both women. One's name is Marion, Marion Johansson. The other woman was by the name of Ann Norwood. They had the ability, the skill, that I believe was somewhat a gift of God, but also a gift of God that they developed and worked on to actually be present with me, not just in their physicalness, but presence with me to listen to what I had to say when I was trying to share my heart, when I was trying to get things. And they listened to what I needed to say. They didn't just try and talk at me. God's not just talking at you. He's talking with you. If he was talking at you, probably life would be a lot different than what it is. Because it would be him giving orders, do this, do that, do this, everything else. It wouldn't be where he was talking with you so that you could grow more into yourself and more into him. He's a voice crying in the wilderness, the wilderness of you and the wilderness of me. And we learn how to listen to him by learning how to listen to others. But it usually starts, at least it did for me, where those two women specifically, among many others, but those women specifically took the time to actually listen to me when I set time to be with them, they were always present with me. As you come into Christmas this year, I pray that you don't just try and have activities, 
but actually pick out one or two people in your life and just say, when I'm with them, I'm actually going to listen to them. It may start with a grandchild or a child that you have, where you actually don't just try and take care of them and direct them and get things for them, but where you listen to what they're doing and listen to what they're saying and listening to what they feel. Because it's in those things that the foundation of the spirit grows. And it's in those things that that spiritual relationship that they have and that you have with God begins to really mature and take root in a way that changes your life. As you come to Christmas this year, I pray that you listen. Amen.